So Lenovo has been teasing their new Lenovo Zuck Z5, and they've actually announced a couple of specs that sound a little bit sketchy, so let's check it out. All right, so before we start, I just want to mention that I absolutely loved my Zuck Z2, and I used that phone for a year, which is a huge achievement for a tech reviewer like myself as I get new phones every week. So you can imagine I was quite sad when Lenovo announced they would no longer produce phones from their Zuck line, but imagine my surprise when they started announcing and leaking the Zuck Z5. It was like a dream come true. So Lenovo's president, Chang Chen, he started leaking stuff on Weibo, which is China's version of Twitter. And we all know that the phone is launching on June 5th at 2 p.m. Beijing time. And it's obviously gonna be the Zug Z5, but we know precious little about this phone other than that. And all we know is what the president told us, and we also know four key specifications. And let's go into these in detail. So first, the phone is gonna come with a 95% screen to body ratio. And is that real or fake? Now, it's pretty hard to fake a body ratio number because it's so easy to measure, right? You just look at the screen and you look at the amount of bezels around the screen and you get your screen to body ratio. So I don't really see how Lenovo could fudge these numbers. If they say 95%, it's gonna be 95%. Now, the only thing they can really mess with here with the screen to body ratio is where they put the actual bezel. And that depends if they are smart and put it somewhere where we don't notice or somewhere where we do notice. We do know that there isn't going to be a notch on this phone, which is actually gonna be good because there's no notch in the promo pictures. And such a high screen to body ratio also means that the figurement sensor is either gonna be on the back or it's gonna be in display. I'm not quite sure which one it's going to be. And finally, the back of the phone is gonna look like the Huawei P20 phone with a kind of Lumia shimmer, but it's also gonna be dual tone. It's gonna look good, it's gonna be glass, so hopefully it's gonna be wireless charging in it also. Second, the camera. Now, if you didn't notice, I'm going from least preposterous to most preposterous specifications that have been released. The second here is the camera. The first was the uh, screen to body ratio. Both of these are fairly, you know, mild. There's not really much, you know, wiggle room in here. So let's go on to the camera. So it's gonna be a dual camera, as you can see from the watermark, and it's also going to be AI enabled. And it's obviously gonna be for all the China people who love taking photos of themselves with perfect skin. So quality wise, let's take a look at this photo. It looks a little blurry, not sure what's going on here. And in the second photo, it actually looks fairly good. There's some nice color saturation. There's some decent bokeh and good separation between foreground and background. And a detail looks nice. Now, the last photo here also has some pretty good bokeh and some good separation, again, between foreground and background. Detail looks nice, color looks good. So I'm pretty pumped about the camera here. All right, so now here is where we start going into crazy town. The president says that the Zug Z2 is going to come with four terabytes of storage. Now, just think about that. My gaming slash video editing computer has four terabytes of storage and I've only filled up three terabytes and that's because I have one terabyte that's been cloned twice in case I lose some data. So four terabytes, even for a computer, a video editing dude is incredibly hard to fill up. Now, is it possible to have a phone with four terabytes of storage? Absolutely. The Smartisan R1, which was just released a couple of months ago, maybe just one month ago, has one terabyte of storage, but the prices on that phone are pretty indicative of the storage price. So let's look at the price here at Geek Buying. It costs about $1,159 for the 8 gigabyte, 128 gigabyte version. And when you jump up to the one terabyte version, it jumps up to about $2,200. Now, of course, $800 is probably not the price of the entire one terabyte module, but you know, we really don't have anything else to go on. So let's just stick with this for now. $1,000 for an extra one terabyte of storage. Now, if you multiply that by the extra amount of storage we have here, which is four terabytes, you get an extra $3,000 on top of the Smartisan R1's $2,000, which is a massive $5,000 for a four terabyte phone. Anyway, I'm fairly certain this is just a marketing tactic, right? They just want people to talk about their phone. They wanna get the media to talk about their phone and they have succeeded because nobody's releasing a four terabyte phone. They are the first. Now, there are two possibilities that could come out from this specification. Number one is that they actually release a phone with four terabytes of storage, but they'll most likely release it at like a higher price, like $5,000 It's gonna be insane. And they're gonna release like 10 units. So there's, it's gonna be a very limited supply. Number two, they could go through a very sneaky way to get around that four terabyte number. They could release a phone that has, let's say 128 gigabytes of storage. And then they'll say, oh, you guys have 3.9 terabytes of cloud storage. And yeah, that would be like the cheap way and that would make people very angry, but it could be the thing that they're doing. All right, and the most preposterous claim here, the fourth one is the battery life. The president claims a 45 day standby from the Lenovo Zuck Z5. 
Now let's break that down a little bit. I just tested the Ofitel K10 a few months ago, which has an 11,000 milliamp hour battery. And that phone loses around six to 7% in two days. And when you divide that by 100%, you get around 32 days of standby. Now granted, that is with a very power hungry MediaTek processor. So let's move on to something else that's a little bit more power efficient. Let's take the Xiaomi Mi Max 2, which has a 5300 milliamp hour battery and the Snapdragon 625. Now that phone, the standby battery loses around three to 4% a day. And when you divide that by 100%, you get about a 25 day standby, which is a lot better than the Ocotel K10, but it's still nowhere close to 45 days. So again, we've got two possibilities here. Number one, the Zuck Z5 comes with a super efficient processor like the Xiaomi Mi Max 2, the Snapdragon 625 or equivalent. And it comes with at least a 10,000 milliamp hour battery because that's like the only way you're getting 45 day battery life or standby battery life. And I really don't think that's possible because Lenovo has been kind of leaking this in a way to show that it's sleek, it's beautiful, it's futuristic, and there's no way you're fitting a 10,000 milliamp hour battery into a beautiful body. Just look at the Ocotel K10. It's big and it's bulky and it's ugly. And the second possibility, if they don't release a 10,000 milliamp hour phone, is that the dude is lying. Maybe you can hit a 45 day battery life standby, but that would be with every single thing off, the screen never being turned on, you know, it's eco up the eco modes, and then maybe your phone hits 45 days. But right now, if you, if you have your phone regularly, there is no way a phone in 2018 hits 45 days unless it's got a Snapdragon 625 and it's got a 10,000 or higher milliamp hour battery. Anyway, we have very little info about the Zuck Z5. And some of it is actually pretty crazy town, obviously. So we'll have to wait until June the 5th to get all the info on this very intriguing and exciting phone because it is from the Zuck line. Oh, and actually last thing I wanted to talk about, I'm not a fan of ZUI. Um, I would much rather have stock Android. I really hope Lenovo has, you know, stock Android on this uh, Lenovo Zuck Z5, but I highly doubt it. it's probably gonna be ZUI, which does have one very nice feature that I like, which is swipe up from the bottom and you get a nice quick settings menu. Kind of like the iPhone, but not really. It's a kind of like a better implementation. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below about the Lenovo Zuck Z5. And I want your specific thoughts on whether or not Lenovo is going to fulfill these, you know, kind of specifications in the way that we want them, you know, not 45 days standby battery life in the cheating way, but in the real way and actually four terabytes of storage, actually a good camera and actually 95% screen to body ratio. Be sure to hit subscribe and hit the little bell icon to make sure you're notified of any of the latest videos I upload. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.